Hi guys and welcome again to Smart Prep. Today we are continuing with our NBT Maths preparation. If you are studying for your NBTs and you are looking for NBT AQL, the quantitative literacy portion, uh, you are in the right place but just not on the right video. So you can check out the playlists in the description where uh, I put playlists to the maths and the quantitative literacy as well as in the comments so that you can get those and watch them in order. Okay, so we are continuing from last time. By the way, behind me, thanks very much to our members. If you are considering being a member, that would be great. You get access to all of the videos um, as soon as they come out, no delay, and some of our members-only videos. Um, if you're just here for the free stuff, that's fine. Please like and subscribe. It really helps us out. That's how we keep... Uh, doing these videos is every time you guys comment, like, and uh, subscribe, share with your friends. It really helps the channel, and we will continue helping you by posting these videos. Okay, so uh, question 20. Um, if you're new here, you can uh, check out the playlist and start from question one if you'd prefer. Otherwise, let's just carry on. So uh, we are asked, find the values of x for which the function f of x equals 2x to the 4 minus 8x decreases. So where is it going down? Okay, so when we want to find out whether a function is increasing or decreasing, we have to find the derivative. Okay, let me just use a different pen here quickly. I'm going to do this on the actual document so that I can save this and upload it to the website. Um, where you guys can download. So check out smartprep.co.za uh, and I will put a link to that as well where you can get hold of these past papers. Okay, enough with the shameless plugging. Here we go. Uh, f dash of x, the derivative um, for this function will be 4 times 2 is 8. x, take 1 off the 4 to get 3 minus and then the derivative of 8x is 8. If you are not sure how I did that, I'm not going to spend a lot of time showing you calculus again. So either if you are doing maths literacy and you've never seen uh, calculus before or if you haven't gotten to the derivatives yet in your pure maths, check out uh, Nick Hiltzman. Just search on YouTube for Nick Hiltzman. I will be doing this exact same question, but I will be taking a little bit more time over it for the people who are doing maths lit, because I've noticed a lot of comments in uh, saying, I don't know what's going on, I'm really nervous. So I will take a bit more time in those other videos. Um, so check out Nick Hiltzman, uh YouTube channel, my private channel there. Would love to see uh, you guys uh, joining and subscribing over there. I've got 800 members. If you can help me get to a thousand, that would be wonderful. Um, okay, let's get to it. More. Uh, more maths, please. Less, uh, less messing around. Okay, so when something is when the uh, function is decreasing, that means the derivative is less than zero. So less than zero. So the crocodile is going to want to eat the zero, isn't it? Because if it's less than zero, uh, it's gonna a zero seems like a hungrier, a, a tastier meal than than the the, the negative on this side. Okay, so uh, what we have to do is we can divide by uh, 8. Um, uh, and so we get um, x cubed minus 1. Okay, now how is this function going to be less than 0? How is it going to be uh, less than 0? So if you put a 1 cubed in there, it's going to be 0. Okay, so it cannot be 1, so it cannot equal 1, so these are correct. Um, we know that if we cube root um, 3, we get uh, 1. So we know that it's either one of these. Okay, but let's now test that. So our critical value here is going to be 1, right? Because if I, if I do this, I get, um, I can cube root both uh, x and it'll be 1, right? So we know we've got a 1. Now, which way is it going to go? Okay, so we can test, right? So what happens if we put a 2 in here? A 2 in here. Well, x, um, if we put it, well, 2 in here would be simpler. Well, 2 cubed is 8, right? And 8 minus 7 is, is, 
is seven, which is positive, right? So anything bigger than, let's do that, anything bigger than one is going to be positive. And anything smaller than one, right? So if it was, say, um, we could make it zero, zero cubed would be zero and negative one would be negative, And that would indeed be true. So that is negative, And that's where it's true, right? So x is going to be less than one. Okay, so it's a. 21. Uh, the graph of y equals a 3x plus b is shown below. Choose the correct description of a and b. All right, so when you see this, this is an exponential graph. Okay, and I will again uh, check out Nick Hilterman YouTube. Um, I will go with, in this with a bit more detail. But for now, I'm just going to draw the exponential graph. And hopefully the pure maths guys and maybe the maths lit guys who only dropped to maths lit recently and still remember the exponential graph goes like that. If I make a negative, that is the same as making y negative. Because if I make this a, a negative, I could change the y to negative to keep that part positive. Basically what I'm saying is if a is negative, our exponential graph goes from the normal thing like this to this. So this is where a is positive. And here is where a is negative. Right? Okay, so we're sort of getting there. We can, we're can we looking at c and we're looking at d um, and thinking those are probably correct. Now what we're doing is it's shifting. It's shifted up. So how do we shift this graph up? Well, we can simply just put B must be then positive, right? Because if I make this uh, plus, say, B, it'll shift this up by B, right? So plus B, it'll, it'll go to there. Okay, so B has to be positive and A has to be negative, and that is D. Okay, so our answer here is D. Okay. Okay, I'm going a little bit quicker on these videos. As I said, um, I'm happy to take a little bit more time on my personal channel. This is our business channel, Senzo and I, um, and my personal channel. I will do some of these videos just to help the guys out who are almost needing to be shown this section, if that makes sense. Um, you know, not just help with this question, but actually help with what on earth is going on in this section. Um, okay, so uh, the graph of 3y minus 2x plus 4 is equal to 0. It's reflected in the x-axis. So when it's reflected in the x-axis, we know we change y to negative, right? So y goes to negative. And if it's shifted 3 units up, uh, 3 units to the left, then x to the left, so backwards, it'll become positive, right? So plus three. Okay, once again, I'm just doing the bare minimum there. I'm not explaining why uh, that is. That is for uh, the other channel, because I know that some of you, um, most of you probably, hopefully, know what I'm talking about when I said that. Okay, so the y becomes negative. So this y here in y becomes negative y. Okay, and then the minus 2x, and then we're going to say that we're going to actually make it x plus 3. So we're putting a bracket there, and we put plus 3, because when we shift it left, it becomes positive 3, add 3. And then we're going to just plus 4, as we did there. Okay, so we're doing this here, we're just adjusting. All right, well, we get negative 3y minus 2x minus 6 plus 4, right? Which simplifies to negative 3, 3y minus 2x minus 2. Okay, well, that is none of the options here, but it's equal to 0, right? So we could divide everything by negative 1, 
and we would get 3y plus 2x plus 2 equals 0. And boom, we have our answer D there. Okay. Right. Uh, find the range of f of x equals 2 sine 3x minus 1. Okay. So this, again, is another one where I could take a, a fair amount of time on showing the sine graph and exactly how it works. But I'm just going to double. So the normal sine x graph goes like this. Okay. If we put a 2, doubles it to that white line there, to 2 and minus 2. And then we subtract 1, so we shift it down 1. So the minus 1 takes it down to, down to here. So 2 down to 1 and minus 2 down to minus 3. And so our range is from 1 to minus 3. So that would be B. Okay, let's do one more. The possible equation for the graph below is shown. Okay, so just looking at this graph, this looks like a cos graph, right? Because a cos graph goes like this. Not very good drawing. Hang on. Let's just draw the points quickly. There, there, there. Oh, that's why, because I've shifted it. That's why it wasn't lining up nicely. Okay, so here's our regular cos graph. So this is a graph that should be starting, um, but it's it's been shifted. So this is a regular cos. If it was there, it would be a cos graph uh, coming there, right? But you can see this is shifted forward by 30. So we, we're looking at a cos graph, which would be x minus 30, right? Um, so this cos graph shifted forward, you'd say x minus 30, and that would give us this white graph, which is what we're looking for. And then we see that the amplitude is double, right? So then this is 2 here. That must be a 2. So we're looking at uh, 2 x minus 30. So that's B. Okay. All right. So as I said, in my on my personal channel, Nick Hilterman, I'm going to be going through these questions with in a bit more detail. I will show you exactly what a sine graph looks like, a cos graph, and all of those things, and, and how these equations will change that graph, and just give you guys a bit of a background so that you can answer these questions. Um, thank you very much for watching. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate the members behind me. And thanks again for watching. And I will see you soon. So please like and subscribe before you leave. As I say, it helps us out a hell of a lot. Thanks very much. And we'll see you soon.